Solar Energy Research at Helmholtz Centrum Berlin. The sun is our largest source of energy. It's the goal of HZB to use the sun as efficiently as possible in the future. But how exactly is electricity made from light? At the heart of conventional solar cells are two special semiconductor layers. One is called an n-type layer and the other a p-type layer. In the n-type layer, the atomic arrangement results in a surplus of electrons, which can therefore move around relatively freely. In the p-type layer, it's the opposite. The atomic arrangement is missing electrons in certain places. Where one is missing, we say there's a hole. Where there's a hole, a nearby electron can jump in to fill it. In this way, the holes can also move. If you bring an n-layer and a p-layer together, free electrons begin to move from the n-layer to fill the holes in the p-layer. A special junction forms that ultimately produces an electric potential in the material. When sunlight falls on this junction, the light energy can knock an electron off its atom. This results in an extra free electron and leaves behind a corresponding hole. Each of these flows along the electric potential, migrating through the junction to the respective pole. At the pole, a special contact layer collects the electrons. The electrons flow through a conductor and an electric current is produced. The more electron hole pairs are produced in the solar cell, the easier it is for them to make it to the contacts, the greater the potential difference becomes, and the more efficiently the solar cell works. Classical solar cells are made from silicon crystals. They convert about 20% of sunlight into electrical energy. It takes large quantities of highly pure silicon to produce them. They're expensive and energy intensive to manufacture. There's a future instead in thin film solar cells. As the name suggests, they're significantly thinner due mostly to the semiconductor layers used in them. In classical solar cells, these layers are around 0.2 of a millimeter thick. Thin film cells, by contrast, make do with only a hundredth of that. This saves material, and the cells can even be applied to a flexible substrate, for example. Applications become more diverse, and ultimately, electricity from solar cells becomes cheaper. An HZB concept, a thin film silicon solar cell. It's applied as an ultra-thin layer directly onto a glass substrate. Silicon is used because it's affordable and its properties are well known, but the manufacturing process is very different. There's no need to grow the silicon slowly into a crystal. Instead, it's vapor deposited within a few minutes at less than 600 degrees Celsius. The whole thing is heated once more in an oven. The silicon atoms rearrange and a regular structure is formed. The end product is an ultra-thin layer of crystalline silicon. Another concept of HZB is being pursued under extremely clean conditions. Instead of silicon, the researchers are working with so-called calcopyrites. These are compounds of copper, indium, gallium, and sulfur or selenium in various combinations. Calcopyrites promise a relatively high energy yield at low cost and low energy expense. The researchers produce different mixture ratios by computer. In the so-called sputter coater, the necessary materials are first brought into a gas-like state under vacuum conditions using high energies. The materials then deposit onto a substrate as an extremely thin layer. A number of steps follow, where the layers are modified again and contact layers for the solar cell are added, for example. An electron micrograph reveals the structure of the solar cell. On top is the n-type layer. Directly below it is the p-type layer of copper indium sulfide. And finally, on the bottom, is the contact layer of molybdenum. At HZB, this manufacturing process achieves very high quality, yet the process is still too costly for mass production. 
The researchers at HZB have therefore developed a patented method by which they can spray on thin layers at relatively low temperatures of around 200 degrees Celsius. The material used is dissolved in alcohol as a metal salt. Then the liquid is brought into rapid oscillation using high-frequency ultrasound. This causes tiny droplets to be expelled from the liquid into the air, forming a fine mist. This mist is then directed to the preheated substrate. Here the tiny droplets precipitate, gradually forming an even layer. Next, the layer is exposed to a reactive gas. This spraying and gas treatment process is repeated until the layer has reached the desired thickness. This is how the future of low-cost, thin-film solar cell production could look. For such pursuits, quality control is of utmost importance. HZB has several testing stations for measuring the efficiency of solar cells. Using a solar simulator, for instance. This is a special lamp that approximates the intensity and spectrum of natural sunlight. The solar cells are illuminated and the yield of electric current is measured. Present thin-film solar cells achieve an efficiency of 20%. One of HZB's research goals is to improve this even further. Electrons generated from sunlight have to overcome a number of hurdles on their way to the contacts. At grain boundaries within the material, for example, where the arrangement of atoms suddenly changes. Exactly how these structures affect the efficiency of the cells is still unclear. Electrons also have to make the transition from the semiconductor layer to a contact, such as zinc oxide. Many electrons are lost at this point, which reduces the ultimate electricity yield. At HZB, the researchers have many different methods by which to study these processes and thus to understand what's actually happening inside the materials. For instance, the scientists fire ultra-short laser pulses at simple solar cells. Specific regions can be studied using different wavelengths, that is, different colors, of light. Depending on the color, they can study the electric current loss within the junction or upon transition to the contact. With the electron storage ring Bessie 2 the researchers at HZB also have the rare opportunity to study sample solar cells using special radiation known as synchrotron radiation. In a circular magnetic tunnel, electrons are accelerated to near light speed. At such speeds, they emit synchrotron radiation, seen here as green light. This radiation strikes the solar cells at high energy and knocks out individual electrons. From the number and behavior of these electrons, the researchers can draw precise conclusions as to what atoms exist at what concentration and exactly where within the samples. The neutron source BER2 provides a similarly detailed insight. The neutrons produced within it are forwarded to several experimental stations. There, different mixture ratios can be tested, of the raw material copper indium sulfide, for example. Neutrons exit the beam tube on the left and then scatter as they strike the sample. Arranged in a semicircle are detectors that respond to the arriving neutrons. From the signals they provide, the scientists can determine the spatial arrangement of the different elements. The close relationship between pure research and practical application at HZB has already led to the first commercial success, thin film solar cells made from copper indium sulfide. These are manufactured by Soltexture in Berlin, a spin-off of HZB. Other practical steps are being taken at PV Combi. At the Competence Center Thin Film and Nanotechnology for Photovoltaics, thin film solar cell technologies and products are being developed in direct collaboration with industry. This will secure Germany's leadership in the field. One novel and innovative concept for the future could be to produce fuels directly from sunlight, so-called solar fuels. Because the sun does not shine continuously, it's important to be able to store the energy from solar cells for later use. 
The researchers at HZB are therefore working on a combination of solar cells and catalysts to produce hydrogen directly from sunlight. This hydrogen can then be burnt very efficiently in oxygen, with the advantage of a high energy yield and with only water as a byproduct. With all this future-oriented research and development, HZB places emphasis on young and highly educated researchers from around the world. Only in this way can Germany and Helmholtz Zentrum Berlin secure their leading position in the future of solar technology. For the future belongs to the sun.